Welcome to Communicating Through Electronic Media and Film to Influence Environmental Behaviors and Perceptions. A variety of media modalities have been used to communicate important information regarding present or future environmental issues, crises, or emergencies. One way social media are used to communicate about environmental issues is by the means of the mountaintop selfie. For many folks, an excursion into the wilderness wouldn't be complete without a public post to broadcast their travels. At the University of Vermont, researchers have used geotagged photos on social media to study the use and relative popularity of different parks and even particular trails. New tracking capabilities of personal technology also record real-time statistics that can be used as a crucial defense of public parks. Social media has also been a weapon of choice for environmental activism in several ways. Advocacy organizations are able to widely disseminate their messages through different social media platforms. Many environmental campaigns have used social media to apply key pressure on polluters, including the Greenpeace Anti-Arctic Drilling Campaign. Organizations have used disturbing videos and touching images alike to garner large-scale public support. One modality for communicating about emerging or potential environmental crises is the documentary film. These may be used to alert the public about urgent environmental issues in the process of development or after a critical level of urgency has occurred. Jacobson 2011 tested whether Al Gore's documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, caused an increase in the purchase of voluntary carbon offsets. He requested 1,389 U.S. zip codes where the film was shown from Paramount Vantage and found that in the two months following the film's release, zip codes within a 10-mile radius of a zip code where the film was shown experienced a 50% increase in the purchase of voluntary carbon offsets compared with zip codes where the film was not shown. However, the increase in offset purchases did not last. A year later, the number of offset purchased near these theaters had returned to prior levels, showing that Gore's film had only a temporary effect on behavior. A recent approach, 2016, by Dr. Hank Jampol, my colleague and myself, Rachel Diltz, aimed to measure people's environmental attitudes and perceptions employed by the Implicit Associations task. One variation on this method uses computerized images flashed on a screen near the recognition threshold of 500 milliseconds. In our study, college students were randomly assigned to either of two conditions. Treatment group number one watched a video about bridges. Treatment group number two watched a video about dolphins. The research employed a standalone game incorporating implicit association task principles. It provides scores reflecting implicit connections with nature, for example, whether the subject self-identifies more with the built or the natural environment. The standardized difference between the mean response latency for compatible me-nature and not me-built and the incompatible me-built and not me-nature were done with 10 trials at each of the combinations. For example, some nature words were ocean, flower, dolphin, whale, built words, bridge, car, chair, and truck. Me words were I, me, mine, myself, and self, not me words were it, other, there, them, and they. Subjects in each film viewing the condition were also given the opportunity to make a monetary donation to helping dolphins or to repairing bridges in their community. Significant differences were found between treatment groups on both measures, suggesting the behaviors were affected based on the media topic watched. On the Flexi Twins computer task, subjects who had viewed the video about dolphin communication displayed a greater tendency to associate their self-concept with the natural environment than did the group that had watched the film about bridge construction. On the charitable contribution task, there was a general tendency for subjects to donate money to the dolphin cause rather than to the bridge fund, regardless of which video they had looked at. But 95% of the subjects that had viewed the dolphin video elected to donate to the fund to protect dolphins whereas only 60% of the subjects who watched the Bridges video chose to donate money to help the dolphins. Thank you for attending.